Hi, and welcome to this course in CNC programming for beginners. It is my hope to help those that may be curious, a hobbyist, or even someone about to begin their career in learning the process of manufacturing parts with the CNC machines. In this course, we will look at CNC machines as well as the role that G-Code plays. I will cover the basics of understanding and even creating G-Code to control a CNC machine as well as look at some of the machine components and reason for the tool design. We will also take a look at some software that can help you better understand the code and just in case you don't have the money to spend on a large manufacturing machine to practice it yourself. I will provide you with some reference material to help you learn about the programming process and we will write the code to create some simple parts. Overall, this should be a fun course that teaches you some fundamentals about the overall process of machining a part and understanding the code that makes it possible. Let's go ahead and learn how to do CNC programming with G-Code. But before we do that, let's make sure we have the right software downloaded. In order to get the software we're going to be using in this course, go ahead and go to cncsimulator.info. It will bring you to this page here, and if we go ahead and scroll down a bit, you'll see there's a download link right here. If you go ahead and follow the instructions, you can get it downloaded right away. Um, some useful resources. Let's go ahead and look at this CNC cookbook. This is very useful. If you go ahead and read through that, you can find a lot of valuable information, as well as the modern machine shop as well. You can get some webinars, videos, and a lot of useful information here as well. All right, let's go ahead and close that out. Once you get the CNC simulator installed, this is what you would see when you get it open and running. For starters, we can go ahead and left click in this graphics area and we can move around the simulator as well as right clicking to pan around. Just make sure to hold down the mouse button as you're doing that. You can also scroll in and out with your mouse as well as using the letter 5 key on your numeric keypad and page up and page down to zoom in and zoom out if you wanted to use more of a keyboard kind of navigation method. Let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the interface. Starting from the top corner, we have this 3D, 2D, as well as a sim cam. We'll cover these a little more in detail in a bit. For now, let's just go ahead and leave it at 3D. Because this is what we're going to kind of be looking at to see as we create our code, code over here on the right hand side, what it's actually doing to our parts. We have file to go ahead and save and open CNC code, as well as some options to edit, simulate to play, stop, pause, our actual simulation of the code. We can view a few things here, tools, settings we'll be going into as well, SimCam and help. On the bottom left over here in this corner we have a play, pause, stop, the same view tools that were up here under simulate. We also have these three icons here. This will go ahead and reset the view which would be the same as if we press press the 5 key, I would go ahead and reset your view. We also have this button here which will go ahead and open up and you can select your machine. And we can also hide and show the editor over here on the right hand side. Now the editor over here is where we're going to be typing in our G code. We'll start out with something like G and then you'll see this list of code which is very helpful for us to start learning. We can do something like G0 for now. Also notice that there is highlighting for your code. We can click and select on the controller as well and this will be how you're controlling a lot of the simulations in here but right now we're not really going to touch that. We're going to focus mostly on the editor. A few more buttons down here on the bottom left corner. We have this icon here. If you go ahead and toggle that it will show you various things that you can and cannot see as well as transparency and the speed of which the simulation is being run. I'll go ahead and close that for now. We also have this other icon right here. If we go ahead and click on that, it goes ahead and it kind of cuts through your part so you can see what it is that you're creating. We can do it from the top, from the right. We go ahead and cut in from the front and the back just so you have a better view of what it is that you're creating. Go ahead and click that again to toggle it. This will be various position points, the X, the Y, the Z. We also have a feeder speed and a spindle speed as well. All right. In the next course, we'll go ahead and get started learning how to make some parts. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the physics of cutting tools and how they operate. So in the next section, when we look at how we design tools, we can understand why they're designed the way they are. 
For starters, let's go ahead and look at the speeds of the cutting tools themselves. I'll go ahead and grab a pin here. So let's just pretend this here is going to be our cutting tool. I'll go ahead and shade that in. And it's coming down on a flat surface here. This is supposed to be horizontal. Sorry for my bad drawing. Okay, so for starters, we have a rim speed. And that speed is the velocity of the cutting tool itself because of its rotation. So as it's moving around this way, like so, that will be the rim speed. I'll go ahead and choose a color here and draw this out. And we'll call that VR. This will be the tangent speed coming off as it's spinning. Secondly, we have a feed speed. And this is the speed of the tool as it's moving across the workpiece. So this would be basically the X and the Y speed as it's moving across cutting the piece. So I'll go ahead and grab another color for that. And that would be this direction here. And we'll call that VF for feed. Next what we have is the true speed and this is the speed of the resultant from the rim speed and the feed speed itself. So let's go ahead and choose another color and label that in and that's basically going to be these two added and they're going to be added kind of like vectors if you remember so we're going to kind of come across this way come up so the resultant will be something along the lines of here VR. So these three these two speeds here affect the speed of the actual cutting tool itself. The rim speed will increase when the rotational speed increases of course and it will also increase when the spindle diameter of the tool increases as well. So a larger diameter tool will increase this speed overall. The feed speed will also just depend on the motor itself as it moves across the X and Y direction. Now let me go ahead and pan over to the side just a bit and find an empty space over here. Now let's talk a little bit about the angle that the tool penetrates the material that it's going to cut. So let me go ahead and grab another color here. Alright, that one should be good enough. So we have the tool as it comes down. Kind of goes back a bit and goes up. It's going to be penetrating a small surface that's on the floor. Let me go ahead and change the color. And there are going to be three important angles here to look at. And as it's hitting this point here, this will be its contact point. These are the three angles that we're going to be looking at. This one here is going to be your alpha angle. Sorry if it's a poor alpha for some people. This is your beta. And this here will be your gamma. Now this angle here for alpha is known as your rake. This angle here for your beta is going to be your knife angle. The angle here for the gamma is going to be your relief. And here your beta is going to be determined by these two angles here. So your beta is going to equal 90 degrees minus your alpha and your gamma. So this angle here, your rake, which is also known as your alpha, this angle is very important for making sure you have a proper high quality cut. An optimal angle is largely determined by the material's hardness, of course. A larger rake angle also will result in a sharper cutting tool, but as it gets sharper, it will also be able to penetrate more easily, and that also makes the tool a little more fragile, because if it gets a lot more sharper, it's basically going to be thinner as a tool itself. On the other hand, if you make the angle smaller, then that reduces the ability of the tool to penetrate the material efficiently, efficiently, but it also increases the strength of the cutting tool itself and reduces the wear on the tool. Now as for the relief angle, it's important to have an angle here to make sure that the tool itself doesn't rub against the surface that you're trying to cut on. And when this angle is too small, it's going to generate excess friction and the resulting heat is going to help wear down the tool. A relief angle that's too large, on the other hand, will lead to a fragile cutting tool itself. So as this angle gets larger, this beta here is going to get smaller, so it's going to become a lot thinner for the tool itself. And again, if it's a lot thinner, it might be easier to snap. So again, the knife angle itself, it's going to affect the rate of the wear in two different ways. 
First, a larger knife angle will result in a stronger cutting material and have less wear. Secondly, the larger knife angle is going to conduct heat better and this distri the distributing heat over the more of the material and carrying it away from the cutting tool will help reduce the wear and increase the, the life of the tool. But a smaller angle for the knife angle will make the cutting tool a lot more sharper and able to penetrate better. So it's a balancing act between having the strength and the penetrability of the tool itself. And another thing to look at, let's kind of create a top-down view of this here. So if this is my cutting tool coming straight down, if we're looking from there, I'll call this the top. So this is the cutting portion here. So the cut is going to be this portion here. And this here will be the travel direction. which is this right here travel so it's coming this way and that's coming that way right there so this angle here as it travels as opposed to if it was normal the tool would be slightly slanted a bit even though this is still the direction of travel it's just kind of creating a little angle here this is going to be called your oblique angle so when the cutting tool is not perpendicular to the tool's direction of movement, that's going to be your, your oblique angle. Now these reduce the cutting stresses on the knife itself, and they also improve the tool life, and they reduce the edge chipping of the material and result in an overall higher quality of a cut. So you'll typically see these type of cuts with a oblique angle. Now let's go ahead and look at another picture really quick. If I pull this up, these are three different angles for the cutting tool here and you can see we have an angle here this angle here for the knife and we have the relief so depending on the angle for the rake will cause different chips for example this is just being displayed against a wood grain for example so if you want a larger angle here we'll go ahead to be better for cutting across the grain preferred for cutting with the grain if it's kind of moderate and if it becomes very sharp a small angle here this is preferred for scraping and again this can be applied to various drills as well as you can see this would be the oblique angle that we were mentioning with the typical tool right here so it applies to the same thing here they also have a rake a relief and knife angle so those three angles combined on here they will have those angles on the very tip as it penetrates if you want this tool to plunge into a type of material as well as on the sides of the material itself okay let's go ahead and work on a part now so we're going to go ahead and work on this simple part right here you can find this part in your help files i already attached it within the course so you can go ahead and download it yourself so what we need to do is we need to cut out this portion, go around this curve, come along here, and come down and around. And then drill these four consecutive holes right here. And what we need to do is come up with the code in order to tell the machine to do this. I'm going to go ahead and move this over to the side. You can keep yours open for reference as well. The first thing we need to do is to set up our units and to load the correct machine. Well, we can do that by going to Settings, and then going to Settings, Go ahead and wait a second for it to open up. All right, so we need to make sure we check our units here. Right now, we're currently going to be using millimeters for our units. Once you have everything OK with that, you can go ahead and select OK. Then we're going to go back to settings again, and we're going to go to, go to inventory browser. Then what we need to check is to make sure that we're working on my milling tools. And we're going to go set our tools. And right now I currently have the two that we're going to create already open. Right now you should see zero here. And we're also going to go ahead and set the materials as well. But not in these, this area here. It's the mill work pieces we're going to be working on. So the first thing we need to do first is that set up a part. You can go ahead and click the add. And we're going to create our new tool. You can go ahead and call this sample mill. And then the information we're going to put in here is going to be the diameter. We'll go ahead and let's pull that out since 
couldn't really see it too well. You pop that right back open. Okay, so we need the diameter of this mill to be 10 millimeters, and we can find that within our information in this little left area here, 10 millimeters. So we can go ahead and adjust that to 10 millimeters. We type in 10, and then we're going to give this a length of 50. And once you're done here, you'll go ahead and see your preview. You can go ahead and accept that and hit OK. For now, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that because I already have one created here. The next one we need to do is we need to create a drill. So let me go ahead and open this up again. So again, we need to drill these portions here. And these, again, are going to be 10 millimeters. So we're going to go ahead and go to Add. We're going to go to Pointed. We're going to go ahead and go to Diameter. We're going to make that 10. The length will be 50. And the tip angle, we are going to put to 80. Remember, we need to name this. So you can go ahead and call this sample drill and then hit OK. For now I'm going to hit cancel because again I've already created this so you should see your first tool I called mine sample flat mail we have a diameter of 10 and a length of 50. And remember these are in millimeters I'll go ahead and move over one more and again a drill diameter a tip angle and a tool length. Next we're going to come over to mill pieces we'll go ahead and put the size of 100 for X, 100 for Y, and we'll also put 25 for Z. Again, we'll leave everything else the same. We'll go ahead and hit OK once you have all those settings set up. And currently, we haven't really seen any changes. That's because we're going to have to come over here to our editor and start working on the code. I'm going to go ahead and delete this G0 that I have set up from the previous video. Now for starters, I like to comment on everything and it's very useful when you work on very large programs. In G-Code you may not really want to, but working in other coding languages you kind of learn to comment, comment, comment so that way other people can read it and also help you out. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and add a slash. So the code will kind of ignore this. Now first thing we need to do is add part to machine. So for us, we're going to go ahead and hit the dollar sign. And you'll see these various codes here we can add. And what we are looking for is we'll go ahead and type add regular part. If you hit space, it goes ahead and auto-completes it. And I kind of want to see the syntax on that. So let's bring that back up. I'll go ahead and hit the dollar sign. Add reg part. First one here. So it says adds a workpiece from the registry. So you can go ahead and read the syntax. We're going to have the first portion here that we put. We also have the index. So far, we only have the one part. So we're going to put a one there. And then we also have the X position, Y position, and the Z position. So once we're okay with that, again, I can hit space and it will auto complete it for me. Now it's already trying to select the block that we just created once you named it. I'll go ahead and double click on that. I'll go ahead and press space. Now we have to put the X and Y position of where we want to place this. Let's go ahead and put, let me delete here a little bit. We'll go ahead and put 30 comma space 30. I'll go ahead and press enter. And now if you want, you can come over here and press play. And we will see our block added down there. We can go ahead and move this around, zoom in. And there's our piece we're going to be working on. Pretty soon we're going to get this drill. We're going to bring it down in, put some holes, and we're going to create a designer along the outside. So now the next thing we need to do is we need to change this zero origin point somewhere onto our block. So we have a reference point in our coding. So let's come back over here to the G code. And the way to do that is we can go ahead and hit G. Again, we see all these references. We'll type in G92, and as you can see here, it is a set zero offset. The G92 is used to reposition the origin point, the zero point. This will then be used as a reference point in absolute programming mode, G90. So that's exactly what we're looking for. We'll go ahead and we'll set the position of this top point here. We're moving it from here over to here, and then up in the Z direction. So we'll go ahead and put X30. Let me go ahead and use the keyboard over here, Y30, 
and then we'll put Z25. Again, you can go ahead and put caps or lowercase. I should probably put these as capitals. So I'm going to go ahead and keep everything similar so it's all uniform. And again, I'm going to go ahead and let's go ahead and comment all of our code so we know what we're doing. So that's going to go ahead and set the zero point. Again, let's go ahead and push play. And you notice this zero reference point was moved to the top of that block right there. Let's go ahead and go back to the code. Now the next thing we need to do is set up the tool and change it. So we'll go ahead and we'll comment that. Set tool and change, if I can go ahead and spell that correctly. So in order to change our tool, we'll use a T and then that will go ahead and select the tool that we want to use. We'll go ahead and hit this T1. Now yours can be a different number than what I have here, but I'm going to go ahead and just double click that to accept it. I'll go ahead and press space and we'll do M and we will pick a six. Don't worry too much if you don't know what all these codes are doing so far just yet. We're just working through a process trying to get some codes down and I have reference material for you to learn some of the codes and we'll build again um, some different codes for different patterns we're going to look at so we'll get more and more comfortable with what it is that we're doing. So this will be a exchange tool. We'll go ahead and accept that. And then what we need to do is we need to move the tool to the location where it's going to start to work at. So we'll go ahead and we'll comment on that. Let's see, I'll go ahead and drag this over a bit so you can see it. And I should have put all that in caps, but we'll keep it for now. Okay, so next thing we need to do is we'll go ahead and type G00. This will be a fast traverse. So reposition to a new location with high speed. We don't actually want to drill into this um, block with this speed. This is just to get into position as quickly as possible. So we'll go ahead and put G00. And then we're going to put the position where we want to put the drill at. So we're going to put X15, Y15, space Z2. I'll go ahead and hit enter. We'll comment for our next line. And what we need to do is we need to change the motion of tool. And then what it is we have to do is set feed and spindle. Don't worry too much about the feed and the spindle just yet. We'll cover that in a later course. Okay, so what we're going to start with is a G1. This will be a linear feed traverse. We're going to take it off the G00, which is the fastest. You don't want to be doing any of your drilling at the quickest speed possible. Then from there, we're going to go ahead and move the Z down by 5. And then we are going to set the feed, which is F250 for now. S will be 2000. And then what we have to do is this M3. We're going to specify the direction that we're going to be spinning. Right now, we're going to put clockwise. I'll go ahead and double click to accept that. Let's go ahead and just hit play to see what happens here. As you can see, it's reading the code and it moved in position. So everything's looking okay so far. So next, what we're going to do is I'll go ahead and comment again. We're going to move one direction in Y. So we're going to put the new coordinate. We want to move to Y70. I'll go ahead and hit play so we can see this again. And there's our first motion across that block there. Next, what we need to do is I'll go ahead and comment, set to arc motion, which this is actually an interpolated motion, which means it's going to be moving along an X and a Y axis at the same time. This first motion here was only along the Y, so the X position was kind of held fixed. So moving across an arc, you can guess, is going to be moving along the X and Y at the same time. Then what we need to do is specify the end point of the arc and the center of the arc as well. So we can go ahead and comment that like so. 
let me drag this out a little bit more so we can see it so we're going to set the arc motion and specify endpoint and arc center so how do we do that first thing we need to do is right here we need to turn it into an arc motion and take it out of this linear mode and we can do that by hitting uh, G2 arc interpolation clockwise so circular interpolation clockwise circle center is by default etc etc as you can see it kind of arcs over we have an I and a J as you can see this is the syntax we're gonna give it an X a Y a Z an I J K so it just gives you the endpoint and then another X Y Z for the center of that actual arc where it's going I'll go ahead and accept that for now and then the coordinates we're going to be using are x30, y85, we're going to have i15, j0. And if you're wondering where I'm getting all these numbers from, I'm looking at this part here. And this is the arc that I'm going ahead and I'm curving across. And I'm just making a center here and I'm just telling where the end point is going to be at. Okay. So now what we need to do is we need to actually, let's just see what this plays out to be first. So you can see what we're doing. So here it comes across and then it goes across the arc just like that. So from there, all we need to do is traverse straight across here, straight across down and then straight back across. So all we need to do is give this an X distance to go across a y distance to come down and then an x distance to kind of go across so for our comments we can put now enter the rest of coordinates and set motion back to linear so we'll go ahead and put g1 we'll do that with the capital g1 i'll double click it to accept it and then we're going to do x 85 will be our next position and now the rest of them I'm going to put on separate lines y15 x15 because each of these is going to be an individual movement one movement one movement one movement so it's going to read one block of code at a time one line of code at a time so let's go ahead and play this out to make sure everything is looking good so far okay it's moving across now it comes down and moves back towards the left it's looking good so far so now what we need to do is we need to drill our four holes so in order to do that we are going to have to move away from the part and then change to drill so if you remember from up here this is how we set our tools and we changed it so we can start with the T we'll go ahead and we'll pick that second tool there and then we'll go ahead and hit M6 We'll go ahead and execute the tool change, just like before, T1, M6. Now we're doing a T2, M6. So this is the G code here, and this is referred to as maybe an M code. So let's go ahead and play that out one more time. And then it completes the part, moves away, and it changes the tip. So now let's go ahead and we'll move it to the location where it needs to go to. I'll go ahead and do G0 to give it a speed because we want to quickly go to that location. X30. Let me put in that again. X30. Y30. And the last one is going to be a Z2, just slightly above our zero point. So now what we need to do is, once it's hovered over that position, we need to tell it to actually come down and drill, move up, and then go to the next positions. And also, since we're now doing a drill, it's moving a lot quicker, we need to add some coolant to make sure it doesn't overheat. So we'll tell it to drill multiple positions. We'll go ahead and... multiple positions and add coolant. Okay, so we can do that by doing a G81. And as we hover over it, we see we get this here. So we're gonna drill in, drill up. 
So Z is a total death, and R is a start plane. Don't worry too much about all these here, but as you can see, the syntax for the rest of this code is going to be an X, a Y, a Z, and then an R. So let's go ahead and tell it, for starters, the Z is going to drop by 15. We'll give it an R of 1. Don't worry too much about that just yet. And then we'll also add in a few more codes here. We're going to set the speed, well, not the speed, the direction that it's going to spin. And then we're also going to do M8 to turn that coolant on. So we told it that we're going to drill multiple positions. That's this first portion here. It's going to drill down like just like so. And then we're going to add the coolant right there. Now what we need to do is we need to move to new position. So again, I'm going to go ahead and play this out just one more time. You can see this first portion here. We can also go ahead and use this button down here to step by one step at a time and read through the code. So it finishes. Now it's going to move away. It's going to quickly move to position and it's going to drill one hole. So all we need to do now is specify the new positions relative to this point here. So I'll go ahead and hit Y70, X70, Y30. And then once we're done, we need to end the drill. And we can do that with a G80. And after that, we'll go ahead and use a Z50 and M30 to end the program. I'll go ahead and delete that like so. And now, once our code is completed, let's go ahead and run it one last time to see if we can get our completed part. Now it moves away for the last four holes. And there's our part. We can go ahead and move around a bit more. Move around to look at it. And it looks pretty nice. Now this is a good example of some simple code where we can create a pattern and do a drill and add some coolant. You can go ahead and try and experiment with some patterns of your own. I went ahead and gave a little assignment to come up with an exa sketch where you can kind of sketch out something on a piece of paper and try and construct some code of just the simple movements of moving around, maybe finding the arcs of the locations, and seeing if you can come construct the code for that. I'll be covering various other parts and again we'll be looking at various other types of machines. We'll do some milling here and here. We'll look at a router as well as some other parts that maybe people might recommend to know a little bit more about. Let's take a second look at how to mill a part. So milling part two. There's a few things we need to know before we start milling this time. Let's make sure we know the codes that we're going to be using. For starters, we have a T1, which is going to select the tool that we're going to create. Then we need to have an M06, which is basically a tool exchange. So first we're going to select the tool, and then we're going to tell the machine to actually change to that tool itself. When we get ready to start milling our part, we have to tell the drill or the tool to go to position very quickly. So we're going to give that a G0, which is a fast traverse, to get into position quickly. After that, since our first cut is going to be a linear cut, we're going to turn to a G1, which is a linear traverse. So these are very typical that we're going to use, a G0 and a G1. Now for this design that we're going to work on, we're going to use a G92, which basically is going to move the origin of our coordinate system so that we can work relative to a new position that's convenient for us. Some other things we need to set are the feed rate, the spindle, and the rotation. We can do this with an F, an S, and an M3 code. The F is going to be followed by a few numbers, such as an F200 that we're going to be using. The spindle speed we're going to be setting to 2500. Don't worry about actually knowing these speeds just yet, because we'll cover that in another section. Just know that we will have to set the feed rate and the spindle, as well as the rotation of the tool we're going to be using. Two more important things to note are the G2 code, which is to spin clockwise instead of a linear motion, and a G3, which is to go counterclockwise. So let's go ahead and take a look at the part that we're going to be working on. This is what we're going to try and create. It's going to be a 5x5 five five block 
all these dimensions are in radius, I mean are in an inch, we have a radius of 1.5 on the top right hand corner right here. Then we have a moving down, a dimension of 0.5, another dimension of 1 for the radius, and then finally the last portion of 5 inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to start at this location here. And we're going to move all the way around in a clockwise fashion. So let's look at what we're going to need for our coordinates. Again, this is our part. We're going to start in this upper corner here. And the tool that we're going to be using is going to have a diameter of 0.5. So we're going to have to take this in consideration as we're working on this part. Because what we're going to do is move this part around. It's going to continue to move around. And it's going to move the out around the outside of the part the entire time moving around, 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 like so. Until it completes a full revolution around our part. So one important thing to remember is, let's take a look at this top right hand corner here. The radius that we had was 1.5. But if you notice, the radius from the center here that we're actually going to be traversing is not going to be 1.5. It's going to be 1.5 plus the radius of our actual tool. So we're going to have to make sure to add 1.5 plus 0.25 to each of our dimensions, which will give us a 1.75 for the actual length we're going to traverse of our arc. Well, not actually the length, but the radius of the arc we're going to traverse. So let's take a look at that first portion. We're going to move straight and then move down. This is our zero point here. So as we move straight over across, we're going to move a distance of 5 is the total distance, but what we're looking for is to subtract the 1.5 where we're going to stop for the center point of our circle. After that, it's going to traverse a larger arc than we're used to, and then finally move onward in a vertical direction. So just to write down a few notes for the code we're going to be using. This first portion is going to be a G1. This next portion here is going to be a G02 as we move around counterclockwise. But when we use this code here, we need two things to actually input. We need to input the final location that we're going to arrive at, which is here. And then we also need to know the distance from the center point of our arc from here to here. Our final coordinates that we're going to use are going to be x 5.25 since we're going to arrive 0.25 distance away from our final piece of a distance 5 the y coordinate is going to be a negative 1.5 and then finally we need to have a distance for let me go ahead and erase this bottom portion here we're going to need to know the distance of our arc or the distance we are from the arc so notice in our x direction we have a zero distance so we label that with an i i will be a zero notice this is a capital i next we're going to use a j for the distance we are in the y direction now remember the distance we are is actually a negative portion because we're going to move down instead of up so we have to make sure to add that negative sign and that's going to be the 1.5 plus the distance of the radius of the circle. So we're going to erase the 0.5 and we're going to place a 7.5. So that will be how we traverse around this section here with a G02 for our motion. And this is what we're looking for right here. Let's go ahead and move on. So, so far we traveled straight across and we moved down from here. Now we need to continue from this point and move down to the point of our next arc. Remember, this radius here was a 0.5 R. I'll leave it R for radius. All these are in inches. And we need to traverse all the way down to this location here. So we need to make sure to turn the tool into a linear motion again. We'll do that with a G01 or a G1 would be the same. I'll make sure to fix my G so you know it's not a 6. That will be a G. 
remember to find the last coordinate here we are moving all the way down to part 5 moving up a distance of 0.5 but we're keeping track of the center of our tool so the center of our tool will arrive here in the circle with the radius of 0.25 so we're going to actually move down to a coordinate of y negative 4.75 and then moving on to the next portion so far we've moved straight we move down here and now we're at this location here we need to move inward around this arc all the way down to the final position here so we can continue on moving first we need to specify the rotation we're going to be doing so get out of linear mode which is a G03 and then we need the final X the final Y and we need an I and a J for our next coordinates so remember this X and Y is going to be the final location here that we're going to be moving to and the I and J here is going to be the distance from here to the center of our arc so basically this point here and it extends to there. That's the arc we're going to be sweeping. Notice it's smaller than the actual arc of our piece and above the arc that we traversed was actually larger than our actual piece. So our final X is going to be 4.75. Remember to keep in accordance to our radius we're using for our tool. Our Y is going to be a negative 5.25 our i is going to be a 0.25 and our j is going to be a negative 0.75 once we're done with that we need to go back into our linear motion so again we've moved straight we've traversed around this corner we've come down we've traversed again and now we're at this location needing to move over towards the left first thing we need to do is go back into linear mode a g1 and then specify the distance that we're going to be moving to or the location which is going to be simply an x1 will be right below the y coordinate or I should say the y coordinate is not going to change for this motion here so we're only dictating the x coordinate of motion after that just like before we moved across move down move down move around moved over here and now we need to do the final piece here which again is another rotation now we specify that with the G02 so we have a rotation we need an X, a Y, an I, and a J. I'll go ahead and box those again the X and Y is going to be the final position the I and J is going to be the distance to the arc that we're going to be moving around this distance here and here so here's the value we're going to be using this is going to be our final position as well as the arc moving around and actually I identified the wrong location this location is going to be the final location here that we're going to be using you can go ahead and erase this portion here this will appear in the top right hand corner is where we're going to end at and finally the last bits of code we're going to use are to turn it back into linear mode and we're going to reset to the position of y.25 without moving along the x-axis. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and go back to g0 and we will disengage from our part and move upward with a z2. Now let's go ahead and actually input this code and see what it looks like. Let's take a look at the code we just developed. This is what you should end up with right here on this right hand side. Before we do that, let's make sure to open up our CNC Simulator Pro. Let's go to settings, check the settings, make sure that we are in inches here. Go ahead and select OK. You can select this item here, open up machine. Make sure we're using the milling center here. We're not using these other ones just yet. I'll hit cancel. Go ahead and go to settings again, open up inventory browser, and we got to set up our tool. The tool we're going to be using for this one is a mill diameter of 0.5 and a tool length of 2.5. You can go ahead and add a new one. We're using this flat tool here, the diameter and the length we have to specify. Cancel. If you have more tools, don't worry, just go ahead and add it. And remember, for me, since I have one, I'm going to be placing a T1. You may be placing a different number after that. Our mill piece is going to be a 5 by 5 by 2. I went ahead and just named my block 5 by 5. 
you can add another block if you already have a different one inserted. I'll go ahead and cancel this out. First thing we need to do is to place our block down. So we can do that with this dollar sign and or add regular part one and then one one. The first one is specifying the piece we're laying down and then the next two are the coordinates we're going to be placing at. So the first thing we need to do is to select the tool and change it that we talked about. So that's going to be with a T1 and a M06. We're going to set up the origin to the top left of our part so that way we have a point to reference as we're moving around in a clockwise fashion. Then we need to set the motion of our actual tool to quickly get into position. So we're going to do that with a G0, move into position, and then drop down. Make sure this Z isn't placed right here because then it's going to have a diagonal motion. We just want to move into position above it and then drop down. Then for the first time before we start cutting, we need to give it a feed rate and a spindle speed as well as a direction of rotation and tell it to be in linear motion. Then we specify the first linear motion is going to be to X 3.5. Move down just a bit. After that, we are now moving in a clockwise fashion on the top right hand corner. So we're going to specify the end point, which is this X and Y coordinate. And then the arc distance, where the distance our tool actually is from the center of the arc that we're going to be traversing. Once we finish going around that arc, we have to go down. And this is going to be changing it back into a linear motion and specifying the Y coordinate only because we're not moving any direction in the X or the Y. Then we're going to be moving again in a counterclockwise fashion, so towards our position, towards the left and down. So this is going to be the X and Y coordinate where we're going to end at, as well as our distance from the center of the arc we're going to traverse. Back into linear motion to move across the bottom of our piece. Back into a counterclockwise motion to do the bottom left piece that we have, as well as finishing off our motion moving straight up to our final Y position that we started with up here. After that, I went ahead and placed a G0 to tell it to quickly move away from our part. And this M02 is to end the program. You can go ahead and type in all this code yourself. Come over here to the bottom left-hand corner, push play, and see it in action. And there's our second part that we mailed.